Hey, what is going on guys and welcome back to another episode of our Road to Glory career mode. This is the fourth episode of the series. And we start today's episode off with Mark Hornshoe, our right back being wanted by FC Nuremberg, a team who of course we faced very recently uh, for £525,000. Now that's a little bit under his valuation, but I'm going to let Marky Boy go. He is a right back, we don't play with full backs. He can be used in the centre back role, he's six foot two, but after the signing of Kera in the last episode. We also signed a lit at the start of the season as well. We don't really need to worry about defensive cover. We have enough of that now. He can go as we continue to build for the future with this St. Pauli side. And speaking of building for the future, the first and only target I have in today's episode on transfer deadline day is this guy right here. Kai Havert. Bayer Leverkusen right midfielder, 17 years old, 69 overall already. He's on the loan list right now. I asked by Leverkusen whether we could take him for the year and then sign him for a future fee permanently come the end of the season if we would so wish for 1.6 million pounds but as you'll see Leverkusen said docs come on mate this guy is a real talent in German football we are not going to accept that they said no because of that future fee so I said all right all right fair enough we'll take out the future fee just agree a one year loan and see what they say and as you'll see by Leverkusen said that was totally fine because really this makes sense for both clubs by Leverkusen are sending out a young talent where he's going to get first team football we are getting a decent wide midfielder and playing in this 3-4-3 he's going to see a lot of the ball and get a lot of action so Kai Havertz is in for a one-year loan and I'm very excited about this young man He's surely going to have some very decent potential. He's got some decent stats already. Not exactly rapid, but again, this guy is just 17 years old, already with some really handy stats to begin with. Ball control 72, dribbling 72 as well, agility 73, and he's got four-star skill moves as well. A left-footed player playing on the right side. I think he's going to be a great addition, and he becomes our first and probably only deadline day signing. We also sold our third-choice goalkeeper as well, Sven Brodersen, who's 19 years old only 55 overall. He's gone to Bohemian for £90,000. His deal's up come the end of the year. He wasn't going to get a new one. And of course, I'll take any scratch for him whatsoever and just get him out of the club. So in the end, we spent £9.9 .9 million in our first summer transfer window at the Milan Tour Stadion and also raised a couple million as well in player sales as we begin the transition with St. Pauli. And it was a pretty busy summer transfer window. You see the full list of negotiations here, what we decided to do. Of course, where the real money was spent, 2.5 million going on Delit, 2.2 million going on Mane as well. Spent quite a little bit of money bringing in new players. But again, when you look at this team, now we're past the first ever transfer window. I'm I'm excited. You know, I really, really am. This is a St. Pauli side which is being remodeled to play the type of football which I really hope you guys are going to enjoy watching. Fast, attack-minded approach every single game. And it, it looks really good for the future. You know, it really, really does. It's just one player in the team right now that's 30 or older and that's the right back who came through the club's youth academy who I don't want to cut and everyone else is younger than 30 it's a youthful team it's becoming more youthful and it will get more youthful as this series goes on it's looking like a pretty decent starter team I must say not exactly great but good enough for my liking to begin season one with so this is the team then the 3-4-3 past the summer transfer window how the team is currently set up the bench as well you see Havertz is going to go onto the bench too not straight in the first 11 to begin with and I'm excited you know I really really am a decent enough start to the season may have lost the season opener away against Stuttgart and Mercedes-Benz Arena but two wins on the bounce to follow up from that opening day defeat it's been a good start and in the first game of today's episode taking on Dusseldorf we're looking for our second straight home win and our first straight win in a row he's one I know Alan's keeping an eye on here three in his last three a bit more of the same we'll go down a treat so after beating Nuremberg by two goals to nil in the last game away from home and dispatching Kaiserslautern in our first ever home game as well in the game before that one, we will now host Fortuna Dusseldorf in the first game of today's episode, looking to make it three straight wins on the bounce. And with Moses Odger in really good form right now, the next Kante, three goals in his last three games. I was hoping for another man of the match display from our Ghanaian warrior. As you can see straight away in the game, the first chance fell to us as well, 
just seven minutes in, Moses finding the Aichi down the right-hand side here, and Sahin was played down this right flank, already in attack mode straight away, right from kickoff, exactly what we're aiming to do with St. Pauli throughout the entire series, and Buhadus has been amongst the goals as well, two in his last two games, hit the woodwork with his header, and eventually Dusseldorf got the ball clear. Sahin, however, won it straight back and found Miaichi down this right wing, and once again, we whip the ball into the centre, this time on the ground, once again aiming for our Moroccan striker though, this time the shot was goal bound but the goalkeeper made a really good save and turned it behind for a corner so still goalless but 17 minutes in we'd already had a whole host of shots kept on peppering the Dusseldorf goal with lots of attacks and lots of attempts on their goal another one fell here Kekuta Mane going in search of his first goal for the club a good save by the goalkeeper though kept it at 0-0 and 29 minutes in the attacks did not stop there Miyaichi whipping this one into the centre and another header going just wide the post from Sabota but it was still goalless as we approached the break in a very frustrating first half where we played well, attacked at will but just couldn't break the deadlock with 3 minutes to go though, Miechi found Buhadus and the Moroccan played it inside towards Moses Odja and I've got to say right now I am really liking this duo Moses and Buhadus, Moses and the Moroccan, these guys are absolutely fantastic a lovely one too by our stars of the team right now as Buhadus got it back from the Ghanaian and rifled the ball into the bottom corner for his third goal in his last three games equaling Moses' record. So 1-0 to St. Pauli. We had the breakthrough and at last as well, I went into half-time breathing a huge sigh of relief because I was thinking the longer the game goes on, still at 0-0, I'd wonder whether we'd ever find the opening goal. As you can see though, we were the far superior side in the first half, the only team in it really. And in the second half, we started off strong as well. Three minutes after the restart, Havert went off the, uh, came off the bench there and went in a great cross to the centre, looked for Philip Billing, the giant Dane, but his head went wide the post and behind for a goal kick. So it's still 1-0 to St. Pauli with 11 minutes to go. We were trying to find that second goal, wrap the points up and kill the contest off. A lovely move here saw Mane go through one-on-one -on -one and find the back of the net for our second goal, but the celebrations ended up being a little bit premature and were cut short quickly by the linesman's flag on the far side as he ruled the goal was offside, and as you'll see, correctly so as well. Mane thought he got his first goal in a St. Pauli shirt, but in the end, the Lino called it right and did indeed disallow the goal. So still 1-0 to St. Pauli. But with seven minutes to go, we kept on searching for that goal that would wrap the points up. Once again, Mane at the heart of things. Back healing the ball through towards Sahin, who went for goal as he smacked the post and Dusseldorf escaped. So twice in the game, we'd hit the woodwork. We'd had a goal disallowed and so many attempts on goal, but it was still 1-0. And from that, Dusseldorf broke and got themselves up the pitch quickly. They got the ball forward here, and after I made the tackle with Sahin, I couldn't get the danger clear quickly enough. And as they went for goal from range with their number five, they smashed the ball into the back of the net and made it St. Pauli 1, Dusseldorf 1 in a real sucker punch of an ending to this game. Because I tried to get the ball clear there with Sai and the tackle was made. It came straight to my number 3, Philip, who I tried to get the ball clear with. But for some reason, he had cold feet. I pressed circle, but he didn't want to hoof it. He was dispossessed. The shot came in and my goalkeeper was beaten and I certainly couldn't blame him for that. The final score was St. Pauli 1, Dusseldorf 1. And I ended that game thinking, myself right. I can look at this game one of two ways. Look at the stats there and think this is scripting, this is BS man, we deserve to get all three points or I could sit there and say, simply put we weren't clinical enough and that's how I'm looking at this. We weren't clinical enough we didn't take our chances and as I always say, if you don't take your chances you will get punished and that's exactly what happened because we played well we really did. It was the style of football we'll be playing throughout the entire series with St. Pauli. Loads of attacks, loads of chances loads of shots but sadly not loads of goals, just a one, and in the end, that wasn't enough, and that's how I look at it. Yeah, we should have got the three points, yeah, we played much better, but at the end of the day, if you don't take your chances, you will get punished, and that's exactly what happened as we dropped two points there at home. He's one I know Alan's keeping an eye on here. Three in his last three games, that's top class from the striker. So as we came into the second game of today's episode away from home against Würzburger Kickers here, we were hoping to bounce back and get the three points we should have claimed in the last game at the Millentor Stadion. Of course, we won our last away game, but it is worth noting our only defeat of the season so far came on the road when we were beaten by Stuttgart in the season opener. So I was coming to this game with mixed feelings, really, feeling quite confident, but also there, were, there was just a little bit of doubt creeping into my mind, just a little bit of doubt, a little bit of pessimism, thinking if we don't take our chance, 
chances again, then we won't get the three points. So in this game, I made it my mission to be a lot more clinical. Get those chances, but also score more than one goal. And the first chance fell 11 minutes in as well. Sahin going on a storming run down the right-hand side, finding the Moroccan. And you heard Alan Smith talking about in pre-game. Three goals in his last three games. Well, Alan, it's now four in four. Four as six foot two, number 11. He received the ball from Sahin after a lovely run down the right-hand side. And once again, smashed the ball in with his left foot. He's a right-footed player, but so far, most of his goals have come with that weaker foot as he does get his fourth goal of the season. I've got to say right now, him and Moses, they could have their own mini duel for the golden boot. They're both playing so well and what a luxury it is to see both of them banging in the goals straight away. We should have made it 2-0 though, 14 minutes in and what did I just say a moment ago? I made it my mission to be more clinical in this game. We hit the woodwork twice in 90 minutes in the last game. We hit the woodwork twice within a space of two seconds in this one. God only knows how Sabota hit the same post twice there after Miyaichi's fantastic run and cross down the right hand side but he did and it was still 1-0 and after that happened hitting the woodwork twice straight away I was thinking once again it might just be one of those games where sadly we have attempt after attempt after attempt but just can't find the goal that we need to wrap the points up it was still 1-0 but fortunately for us nine minutes before the break we would get our second goal finally to make ourselves a lot more secure in the lead and it came through Philip Billing yes the giant Dane scoring his first ever goal for the club I was absolutely delighted with that. I love the comment suggestions, by the way, from you guys saying you should call Billing Great Dane or The Great Dane. That's a brilliant nickname for him. Of course, the six foot six Danish midfielder there stormed inside the area, went for goal with the left foot and placed it into the bottom corner. So The Great Dane makes it 2-0 to St. Pauli and we doubled our advantage just before the break. We could have trebled it five minutes to go before the halftime whistle as we tried a little set piece routine from a free kick from 20 yards out. Eventually, Sahin gave the ball to Moses is looking for his first goal since the Nuremberg game, but he smacked the ball onto the top of the crossbar as he went behind for a goal kick. So three times in this first half, we'd hit the woodwork and it was still 2-0. And just before the break as well, the final kick of the half, we almost threw away our two-goal lead and watched Würzburger kickers get it back to just one. A terrible mix-up there between centre-back and goalkeeper allowed a shot on our goal, which fortunately was skied over the bar and behind for a goal kick. We were leading by two, though, going into the break and we were playing much better as well. Full value of our two-goal lead. And 30 minutes after the restart, the attacks didn't stop there. The white shirts kept storming forward every single attack we had, looking for more goals. And we should have got our third here as well. So both are finding Moses inside the area who hit the post. And so for the fourth time in the game, we'd hit the woodwork. And what did I say at the start of the episode or at the start of the game, I should say, I made it my mission to be more clinical in this game. Well, clearly that wasn't the case. We may have still been leading by two. We should have been four or five goals up at this point. We were still only leading by two and once again we were denied here another third goal. This shot being well saved by the goalkeeper and cleared into touch but to be honest, Würzburg didn't really do too much in this game at all other than one half-hearted effort they had before the half-time whistle. We were the far superior side, were deserving of the three points that we were going to claim and with four minutes to go we had a chance to finally get that elusive third goal. Moses Odger storming forward like he does, giving the ball to Ryo Miichi, the former Arsenal winger down his right-hand side. He cuts inside dribbles along the uh, edge of the penalty area, turns his man, goes for goal and finds the back of the net to wrap the points up, runs to the travelling away fans, does a little acrobatic celebration as Moses lifts him up aloft as we win the game by three goals to nil. Moses and Billing getting in on the celebrations alongside the away fans as we wrap the points up and finally find that third goal, which we deserved. We hit the woodwork four times in this game. I had so many attempts on goal. We were looking for that third. I almost totally messed this one up there, just dribbling around the edge of the area with Miyaichi, finally decides to let fly, and what a decision. A fantastic strike by the Japanese winger. He's off the mark, gets his first goal of the season. And I must say, the way we attacked for that third goal was just wonderful. It's exactly what we're doing with St. Pauli throughout the entire series. Doesn't matter what the scoreline is. Doesn't matter how many goals we've already scored. We want more. Always. Keep on going forward, looking for more goals. And we got just what we deserved right at the end of the game. So 3-0 to final score. Würzburg were powerless to resist our fantastic attacking display. We'll be doing this throughout the entire series. And if we don't end up being the league's highest scorers come the end of the first season 
I don't care what position we finish in, I won't be happy. I want us to keep on scoring lots and lots of goals, and this has been a fantastic start to our first season with St. Pauli. Once again, look at these stats. 14 shots, 11 on target. We should have won this game 5, 6, 7 nil, really, but I'll take the 3 nil win. It keeps us in a really strong lead position to begin the season off. Only one defeat so far in our first five games. As you'll see by the news article, it's been a great start for life here at St. Pauli and for Moses Odja in particular. Another man of the match display from the new Kante. He really is bossing the midfield right now and currently bossing the second tier of German football. But that will end today's episode of the Road to Glory career mode, guys. So a big thank you for watching. I really hope you did enjoy it. If you did enjoy this episode, then please do consider leaving a like. Have a fantastic day, everyone. Much love to each and every single one of you. And I'll see you for the next episode in our Road to Glory career mode very soon.